Yes, guys, and we're back. Episode 14 of the Barrow Road to Glory. Now, this season, this season, our targets are clear. Get into a European spot, try and win a trophy. Lads, it is crunch time this season. We have to pick up a major bit of silverware. So, without further ado, let's get into the video. Welcome back, lads. I hope you've been enjoying this series so far. If you have been, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't done already. So, now we've got the shameless plug out of the way. A shameless act by the board, honestly. They've given us 26 mil to work with. Our hands are significantly tired here this season. Trying to improve the squad with such little money is going to be an absolute mission. Looking at our transfer spend over the past four seasons, as you can see, we massively overspent last year. So it kind of makes sense why the board have given us nothing to work with. So we're going to have to do some proper wheeling and dealing this year. Ram Boateng was sold at the end of last season for just under a mil. He wanted more game time. Can't really fault him for that. Jan Hendricks was also sent out on loan. Hopefully he gets some game time this year. Now that does mean we've only got one fit right back in the squad. But we addressed that pretty quickly at the end of last season. Ben Johnson, English right back, seven. 76 rated from West Ham. Moisey wanted 9 mil. Wasn't having that. Had to do some serious bargaining here. Managed to settle in 7.3 mil in the end. When it came to Ben's contract, he actually took a pay cut to come and join us. He believes in the project that we're building here. He picked up the number two shirt and what he will now do is give Romero Hutton, our day one, some serious competition at right back. Because let's be honest, Hutton didn't have the best of seasons last year. We also boosted our defence by bringing in Felipe Sandler on a free. He also took a massive pay cut to come and join, which I was very, very happy with. Now what that now does is it means we've got three top quality centre backs in the squad. So if Oxford or Phillips have a bad day here or there, we can bring Sandler in. Boosting our defence is going to be one of the most important things we can do this season. Because getting clean sheets last year was an absolute mission. This year, we need to be so much more solid at the back. Especially if we're going to be trying to push into the top five this year. Now, with Spurs winning the Champions League at the end of last season, a team that we actually managed to beat, who got four points off them last year, made me think it's definitely time in this career mode where we look for a regen. We're at that point in the series now where we need to be getting these world-class players in. I wanted Ronaldo's regen, Alexander Guedes, but he was already at Everton. He's valued at 70 mil, basically never going to get him. But every cloud has a silver lining because while I was looking for a region, I stumbled across an absolute diamond in the rough. Alexander Chevalier, 19 years old, 90 overall. He's valued at 123 mil. I spent a long time debating whether even, even trying to sign him would be realistic or not. And I thought about it. I thought, let's just meet the lad. Let's just bring him in. Let's see what he's about, if he's got the right attitude or not. Brought him into a swanky hotel. He don't speak a word of English, but the French media have said that this guy is going to go right to the very top. So, 75k a week. This whole transfer has actually cost 5 mil in terms of getting his wages, his signing on fee, bonuses, all of that stuff. We're going to give him the number 10 shirt because obviously I want George Williams out the door. He's not going to be starting every game. He's got to learn the way that we play. I want him to be learning off the players that are already in the club about the Barrow way of playing. Now, I've gone through all of the footage. I've got some all-time player stats to show you. Ishan Sacco, Matty Longstaff, he had a great season last year, and Tom Beadlin. Now, these are the lads that I want Chevalier to learn from. These are the ones who, like, you cut them open, they will bleed blue. They are Barrow through and through. Looking at our home and away form over the past four seasons, as you can see, our home form is actually marginally better than our away form. We're going to have to improve our away form this season if we've got any hopes of going into Europe. As you can see, we defend better at home, we score more goals at home. Hogger Street, a bit of a fortress now. That's what I like to see. And lastly, the all-time player stats. Obviously, Robbie Gotts, Romero Hutton, Ishan Sacco, Tom Beadlin, they're all the names that stand out. Matty Longstaff has broken into the top 10 for goals and assists. Ellis Bird is also there, as is Viti Rosada. Now, looking at the window itself, every other team spent 60, 70, 100 mil. And when you get to Barrow, we've spent nothing. We are literally the poorest team in the league. So whatever we achieve this season, I'll be happy with because it means we're being financially secure. Going into the preseason itself, we've got two bad injuries to Robbie Gotts and Matty Longstaff. So they're going to miss the start of the season. Preseason tournament, we actually ended up going all the way to the final. Went to a penalty shootout. Sam Johnson had to actually take one. 7-6 at this point. Stepped up, slotted it away down the middle. Always go for the goal, he scores a penalty. Picking it up at 8-8 eight, eight at this point. Looking at Banner scored the winning penalty. Secured us a nice little 3.8 mil to our balances. Hopefully that's a good omen for what I want to see this season. Looking at the squad itself, the only area I think we're a little bit light in is another winger. We've only got three proper wingers. So if we get an injury, injury crisis in that position, might be a little bit screwed. But... We'll address that in January because I don't want any more signings now. So the calm before the storm, the only thing that matters this season is silverware. The League Cup, we don't take it seriously enough. This year with the players that we've brought in, hopefully we've got enough strength and depth that we can have a proper go at the League Cup and the FA Cup. So lads, without further ado, let's get into our first game. So match day number one, the opening lineup, Johnson in goal, Malcolm Oxford Phillips, Johnson in the back four. I gave Ben Johnson his debut in this one. Chalabar, Ibanez and Beadlin. Obviously, Robbie Gotts is injured. Matty Longstaff's not fit, so neither of those two can play. 
Beat Rizada, Ishan Sako and Jack Clark up top. Here we are then lads, Hulker Street is ready, the fans are ready this season. This is the season where we've got to make the jump. Got to make that jump from a mid-table Prem team to be going into Europe. This is what it's all about now. We've had a great four seasons, but it's make or break this year. Make or break. We have to have something to show for it. So lads, without further ado, let's get into this one. Inside the first 10 minutes, Wolves, they beat us in the opening day of the season last year. They got that goal in like the 89th, 90th minute. Horribly annoying. Early doors, Wolves on the attack here, and Folo whacked this one. Johnston makes a good save. But from Johnson saving that, he then launches it out to Ben Johnson, his first involvement in a Barra shirt. Goes down to the halfway line, checks back, does the right thing, keeps hold of the ball. Playing possession football is what we're going to have to try and do this year. We can't just be a counter-attacking team. We've got to show a little bit more in terms of dominating game from start to finish. 17 minutes in, Chalabar cuts open the Wolves' defence. Vita Rosado in on goal. Gets our first of this season. Love to see that. It's a brilliant pass from the centre mid. He's now picked up the number four shirt since Boateng has been sold. 26 minutes on the clock. Tom Beadlin, I don't know what he's doing there. He's definitely dived. I don't know what is going on. The fans all found it funny. I found it funny. But next passage of play, nothing funny about this at all. Runs out wide, gets into the box. Great little reverse pass there. Jack Clark hits it. Goes and makes it 2-0 inside the first half an hour. Both wingers getting on the score sheet early doors. Love to see it. That goal is all about Tom Beadling getting that assist. Obviously, he missed a lot of last season with injuries. Good to see him back playing again. Chalabar almost got the third right off the crossbar with that one. Saka gets seconds. Forces a good save from the goalie. Ball's not properly cleared. Forces Chalabar. Ends up getting deflected out for a corner. The corner whipped in by Jack Clark. And then Reese Oxford powers it in. A goal from an unlikely source. He never gets any goals, honestly. Normally, Nat Phillips is the one from corners. But three goals on the opening day. The fans absolutely loving it. Wolves did get one to make it 3-1. The clean sheet evaded us. But it's a positive start. It's three points on the board. On we go. Off to Carra Road next. Now, only one change through the starting lineup. Matty Longstaff made his return to first team football. Finally fit again. Avanis drops to the bench. Now, when we come to Carra Road last year, we were 2-0 up, we lost 4-3. It was not a good day at the office. Early doors, Vita Rosado, he scored the opening goal on that game. He's gone and done it again, celebrating with exactly the same fans that he did it last year. Beautiful stuff from him, 2-2, two two, perfect start to his season. Going into the end of the first half, Tom Beeler made a good interception there from a poorly taken free kick. Matt Longstaff got an assist for that first goal. Tom Beeler tries to pick him out, does eventually find him. Longstaff, great pass, Jack Clark, through on goal, and he gets a second of the season. Top corner, pick that out. Both wingers getting two and two, gets a hug from their gaffer, love to see it. Norwich really didn't know what had hit him, but we've been here before. That effort there by the end of the first half was a very important save from Sam Johnston, keeping it 2-0. Coming up to over the hour mark, we play it out to the right-hand side, Ben Johnson on the ball here. Again, marauding down the right flank, goes unopposed, nobody wants to put a tackle into him. Gets to the edge of Norwich's box, thinks about crossing it, but there's no one in the middle. Does the right thing, holds it up, that's what I like, like to see him doing. Jack Clarkland then gets very lucky there, gives it back to him, into the final third, this time he has to go into the box. He's got three in the middle, puts it on a plate for the captain to get his first of the season. This boy has got goals in him, honestly. The amount of goals that he scores from setting the mid is unbelievable. Matty Longscarf was on two assists at this point, then got his third for Beedlin to go onto a brace, making it 4-0. 10 minutes to go, Chalabar strong in the tackle, plays it into Beedlin, plays it up to Simon Menendez off the bench. I gave him a little bit of game time for the last 10. Brandon Rose, delightful little chip there. Beedlin on his hat trick, gets his hat trick. I'm pretty sure that is his first hat trick of the series, which I can't believe is the case because he scored so many goals. Anyway, once again, the clean sheet did evade us. Norwich got a goal with four minutes to go. But it does not matter, lads, because that's back-to-back -back wins. Eight goals scored in our first two games. Lads, I'm telling you right now, we have had a blinding start to this season. The fans, quiet excitement growing. 5-1 the final score. Matty Longstaff takes their headlines at the post-game analysis, getting those three assists in that number 10 role. Match day three, we brought in Alexander Chevalier for his debut and Philippe Sandler at the back. Still looking for that first clean sheet of the season. But of course, all of the talk is about this world-class 19-year-old French striker. He's now got the number 10 shirt. What can he do? Inside the first minute, tracking back there, wins the ball, carries it forwards, plays it into Longstaff, then to Beedlin. First time pass over the top. Watch him struggle off the defender. Puts him on his ass into the box, whacks it. Almost a world-class start. Resulting corner whipped in by Jack Clark. The Chevalier is there with a header. He has got no right to win that header. No right at all. That's got to be the first of many. It has to be. Seven minutes on the clock. We give away a silly free kick. But Kurt Malcolm pounces on it. Another poorly taken free kick. So only got one option. He then locks a hopeful through ball over the top to beat Rosada. Leaves the defender for dead. First touch of his head. Hits it. Bounces off the post. Oh, it should have been two. Should have been two. 
Southampton on the attack here, that effort from distance, probably a comfortable save for Johnston. But then Tom Beadle on the attack, slips through Chevalier, one on one. Can he get a second finish him, one on one, expecting to do better there. So it was another corner for Jack Clark, whips it in. It's another assist and another goal for Matty Longstaff, gets his first of the season. 2-0 inside the first 20 minutes, Sam Felton absolutely shell-shocked. These fans are enjoying the football we are playing. We're playing good football, lads. This is the kind of football that I want us to be playing. Dominating games from start to finish. Coming to the end of the first half, stoppage time was up at this point. Southampton on the attack here. Reese Octwood, a bit weak in the challenge. Cross gets played into a box. We can see the very sloppy goal. First mistake of the season. Inevitably, it was going to happen. Going into the second half, Southampton, they started dominating the game. We definitely took our foot off the gas in this one. Southampton had this effort here, should have been a goal. Now Southampton would not let us play out from the back as this game was developing, so we had to go long. Chevalier, it's definitely not a target man, ends up losing it there. And then Vitti Rosada gets a straight red card for that challenge there. It's definitely a forwards challenge. Awful moment for him. He's had such a good start to the season, and then he goes and gets a straight red, puts us down 10 men. So it was literally backs against the wall, could we hold on? I'm glad to say we did hold on. 2-1 win, did very well there. But this game was marred by an injury to Jack Clark. I said I was worried about wingers getting injured. Three months out, which is not what I want to be seeing. So that does mean with Rosado suspended and Jack Clark injured, Ellis Bird and Brandon Rose were going to be playing out wide in this one against Watford off to Vicarage Road. Early doors should have been 1-0 down. That effort just went wide. This one here, Donster makes a good save, going to the top corner. And then, before the end of the first half, Ellis Bird wins the ball on the high press. Chevalier into Longstaff, smacks it, hits the post, rolls across the line. Oh, lads, neither team scoring inside the first half. Really wasn't a great game, this one. Wasn't a classic, but not every game can be end-to-end -end stuff. 55 minutes on the clock, we finally got a little few touches on the ball. Chalabar, very sloppy there, gives away the ball. Don't want to be seeing that from our centre mid. What for get into our box? This effort here, point-blank save from Johnston. Oh, what a season he's had. He's been unbelievable. He's saving shots he should not be saving. So, over the hour mark, on comes Ishan Sako and Josh Kay. Ishan Sako yet to score so far this season after having an amazing season last year. Broke all kinds of records with his goals. Ben Johnson launches a hopeful through ball to Chevalier. One-on-one, -on -one, surely to score. Again, saved by the goalie. This game was starting to look like he had 1-0 written all over it. 64 minutes on the clock. Watford go down the right-hand side. Ben Johnson gets out of position here. Nat Phillips, watch this, crunching tackle, just what I want to see from our centre-back. Wins the ball, little through ball over the top. Ishan Sacco wins it, he was playing out wide for this one, I couldn't put Chevalier out there. Tom Beadling gives it back to Ishan Sacco, one more into Chevalier, good, good first touch, into Beadling. One more to Brandon Rose to hit it. Oh lads, he just knew he was going to miss as soon as he lined up for it. He's just not a natural goal scorer. Anyway, next passage of play, we win the header, Josh Kay there. Brandon Rose plays it into Chevalier, slips through Ishan Sacco, he lines up, can he score? No, he cannot. Lads, I don't know what was going on with our finishing in this game, did not bring our finishing boots. Mistake at the back here, this effort, half chance, Johnston collects it nice and calm. 15 to go, launches it long, don't do it that often, but sometimes it's got to be done. You've got to try and read the game as it is. Chevalier gets into the final third, waiting for support, checks back, watch Ishan Sacco just here. That's definitely a foul, ref not interested, VAR not interested. Longstaff gets to tap in. Vicarage Road absolutely exploded. Booze ringing around every single corner of the stadium. That's definitely a foul. It's horrible, horrible football. But sometimes these kind of things happen. So 1-0 into stoppage time. Backs against the wall. Bodies defending for our lives. I brought on Felipe Sandler, another centre-back in the box. Brandon Rhodes clears it. That's got to be it now. Ref surely got to be looking to blow in full time. Not interested. He lets the game continue. Stopper time is done. One last attack for Watford. It was all down to this. Could we hold on? Seconds to go. A shot. Johnston saves. What a save that is. Ranieri could not believe it. Ref let the corner be taken. Ishan Saka, the man of the moment, heads it out. I tell you what, lads. That was a hard, hard three points. This save from Johnston in the 93rd minute is what has won us that game. You can only really appreciate it from his angle, as you can see here. He's not got a great view of the ball, he's just bodies all around the place. Oxford, Sa Sandler goes over to cover the other pass. Ball gets played to the edge of the box. Phillips and Oxford, there's such a small gap between them. Shot gets flung in. He dives and saves it with his left hand. Goes with the wrong hand. I'll tell you what, brilliant save. Absolutely brilliant. That's world class. Appreciation from the lads there. Look, Rose, Sandler, Oxford, Phillips. Everyone knows that is top class. Made five saves in that game. Gets a, our first clean sheet of the season. You'd love to see it. On we go. And the next game was our first bogey team of the season. It's Palace. Four changes to the lineup. Romero Hutton makes his first start of the season. Ishan Saka comes in as a jockey in the banners. Now, we know what happens with Palace. 
Palace are a team that we just don't like playing against. The first goal didn't record properly, but picking this one up 1-0 down, 15 minutes in. Edward with that goal. Romero Hutton on the ball here on the right-hand side. Plays it into Deedlin. Switches out to the left to Kurt Malcolm. Just want to get a few touches on the ball, which is pretty much what everyone does here. The banners, then into Deedlin. Back out to Romero Hutton. He's got to have a good game in this one, because obviously he's been dropped in favour of Ben Johnson, who's been absolutely top class. Plays it into Nat Phillips, then into Jochen Banners. One more to Ishan Sacco. And Nathaniel Chalaba got a red card when we played them at home last season. Goes and gets a goal in the top corner. Makes up for that. Exercise of his demons, 20 minutes in. However, a player who also scored in that game last season was Wolf Zaha. On the volley here, nothing we can do about that. Palace go back into the lead. Palace are just one of those teams. I don't know what it is about them. They're just really hard to play against. Look at their shape at the, in this passage of play. They don't put any pressure on. They just hold their positions really well. There's just no space at all to work with. Anyway, 53 minutes on the clock. Tom Beedon here. Desperately looking for an option. Ebanez gets it into Chalabar. Gets into the next phase of play. Again, no options. Finds Kurt Malcolm with a good pass there. Should have released Vita Rizada. Doesn't end up doing it. Back to Nathaniel Chalabar. Then to Beedlin. Ishan Sacco looking for his first goal of this season. Gets his first goal of this season. There's been a lot of talk about one season wonder. Well, that's how you silence those critics. Go and get a goal in a big game. Gets back on level terms. It's a great finish. Great, great finish. I expect to see him banging in goals now. So 2-2 at this point. Sacco on the ball, into Chalabar, carries it forward a couple of yards, back into Zichan Sacco, back to Chalabar. Look at this, look, Palace defending on the edge of their box, no room at all. Gets the Jokin and there's a little bit of room to work with, gets into the box, thinks about shooting, not really any option. Sacco's shot gets blocked, attack looks like it's dead at this point. Palace on the counter-attack, Nathaniel Chalabar, got to make the interception there. Free ball over the top, Romero Hutton, weak, can't be doing that. Phillips comes over, absolutely misses the tackle. Edward with the shot, Johnston with the save. Attack not gone though. Kurt Malcolm wins it. That's the thing I've been telling the boys to do. Just clear your lines, get rid of the ball in these positions. We don't win their header. Falls to Wilf Zaha. You know he's going to score at this point. 3-2 down. So triple sub was made. On comes Longstaff, Chevalier and Robbie Gott. Making his return to first team action since he picked up that injury in the preseason. So from kickoff, we work the ball up the pitch very, very slowly. Palace have gone to an ultimate 5-4-1 at this point. Playing so many players back. Get a little bit lucky there with that 1-2. Robbie Gotts on the ball here. He loves playing in these little pockets. But again, no room to work with. Goes to Nathaniel Chalabar. Back to Gotts. One more to Matty Longstaff. Plays it into Chevalier. Gets very lucky. 1-2. Gets into the box. His first shot. Hits it. Top corner. Back on level terms. I tell you what, this boy is finishing. is top notch. Top notch. Very, very important goal there. So 3-3. Going into the 90th minute. Palace defending for their lives. A through ball over the top to Chevalier. First touch, whacks it. Good save from the goalie. That was definitely going to be the last chance of the game. A point in a game where we were down pretty much the whole way through. It's not a bad result realistically. But the ref wasn't blowing the whistle. Really strange. Chalaba makes the interception there. One last attack to go. Longstaff into Chevalier. Holds it up. Releases Longstaff into the box. On a plate. Robbie got just won it. Oh lad, this spirit turned to first team action. The Palace players stick to the floor. A seven goal thriller. Another win on the bounce, lads. We are on fire. Our form is flying. And what a game to follow it up. Off to Anfield where we got battered 4-0 last time we came here. Lads, playing against Liverpool, it's always going to be tough. Always going to be tough. We beat them when they came to Holker Street. But, of course, we got hammered at Anfield. Early doors, as you can see here, they press so high up the pitch. But, one pass into the midfield, straight onto their back four. We've got numbers forward. Beedlin releases Matty Longstaff. Breaks through the fullback and the centre back edge of the box. We've seen him score these. Ah, oh, missed it. Just goes over the bar. Those are the chances in the big games you have to put away. You have to put those away. Nevertheless, 20 minutes in, again, we play out of Liverpool's high press onto their back four straight away. Gets played into Matty Longstaff. I've just remembered what highlight this one is. You won't expect what happens, honestly. It's just the most ridiculous moment I've ever seen in career mode. Watch this. Sacco look, gets tackled there. Renato Sanchez has decided to go for goal. What has happened there? Uh, honestly, Renato Sanchez is a Barrow fan, clearly, because why on earth he decided to lob Allison 20 yards out? What is going on there? I mean, I don't know if it's arrogance or just a mistake or what, but we would take it. We would take own goals like that every day of the week and twice on Sundays. So 1-0 inside the first half. If we could nick a second, we'd be right in this one for points. Coming up to the end of the first half. Matty Longstaff gets slipped through by Robbie Gotts. Again, attacking that space, driving into the box. He missed his first chance, makes no mistakes with the second. 
Don't give this boy two chances, because he has got goals in him. So 2-0 going into the second half. And when I tell you, Jürgen must have given the Liverpool boys the hairdryer, the abuse, and the kitchen sink, a different team came out in the second 45. They grabbed one pretty quickly. It took them no time at all to go and get the equaliser. A little one-two in the box. Lads, they were just a different animal. Renato Sanchez tried to make up for his mistake. Almost this effort here rattled the post. We should have been 3-2 down. This effort by Werner, again, Johnston keeping us into the game. So, 2-2, 20 minutes to go. I'm happy for a point. We will take a point. It's not a bad result at Anfield. I, I, well, I would have took it pre-game. Chevalier on the ball here. He came on for Ishan Sacco. Trying to hold it up here. Does the right thing. Plays a little short pass into Nathaniel Chalabar. Then to Matty Longstaff. Great pass. Watch this. Over the top. Feeling on the volley. He scored the winner when they came to Holker Street last season. And he scored the third goal again against Liverpool. Tell you what, he's having a great season. Having a great season. You can't stop scoring at the minute. Brilliant finish on the volley. Now, emotions did go from a high to a low when Salah whacked that one into the top corner, making it 3-3. So again, a point. A point is not a bad result. Stoppage time is clearly up at this point. Why the ref doesn't end the game, I do not know. Liverpool on the attack. Edge of our box. Salah plays it into Mane. You thought the save against Watford was good. This one was leagues above better. He has got no right to dive this far across the goal. Look at this, look. Leaps like an absolute salmon. Saves that one, tips it around the post. That's worth a point. That is worth a point. Obviously, looking at the match stats, there's a game of two halves this one. We dominated the first half, but look, from the 75th minute onwards, Liverpool were just unbelievable. It's our first time we've dropped points this season, and the big games come thick and fast. We've got Chelsea at home next. Game where we conceded seven when we played them last season. Back then, we were a very naive, newly promoted team. Chalaba had that effort saved. And then we get a little passage of play on the ball here, 36 minutes in. Chelsea weren't really offering much, to be honest with you. They weren't the same team that blew us off the park last season. It might be to do with Felipe Sandler coming into their back four. Obviously, all I cared about was keeping a clean sheet. Conceding six goals in the last two games. It's not good enough. I've got to be better than that. 38 minutes on the clock, feeding into Ishan Sacco. Tries to find Matty Longstaff. He does find him. Since we beat Rizardo into the box, hits it. Mendy with the save. Promising start. But going up to the end of the first half, Chelsea on the attack here. Lukaku plays a through ball, but Sandler's there, wins the ball. We start the counter-attack. Bielin then plays it into Brandon Rose, playing on the right-hand side in this one. Keep an eye on Brandon Rose in this passage of play. Look, he's about 20 yards offside, but the ball finds his way to Vita Rizardo. He's now open in the middle, on a plate. It's Brandon Rose. He's done it. I tell you what, this lad was very, very close to being sold in the summer. I had added him to the transfer list, but... When I looked at the squad and realised we only had two wingers in Rosada and Clark, I thought, oh, we, have, we have to keep him. Boy, am I glad we kept him. That's a big goal. So, 1-0 up going into the second half. Chelsea, obviously, we're going to come out and start playing at some point. Havertz on the ball here. Plays it to Pulisic. Does a little link up here with Ben Chilwell. Trying to defend, trying to hold on here. Boys get back into a defensive shape. Feeling just misses that tackle there. And then cut Malcolm with the block. And that block there was enough to secure our first clean sheet in three games. And another win. Massive three points against Chelsea. I'll tell you what, teams do not want to come and play us at Holder Street. They do not want to come here. We've made it a fortress. No one wants to come here. Brandon Rose with the winner. Great moment for him. I keep saying it. Hopefully he can kick on and do well now, but I'm not holding my breath. He has little moments here and there. He's a bit like a Divo Corrigi at the minute. Sandler takes man of the match. Brilliant performance from him coming into the back four. Gets that clean sheet. He won the ball five times in this game. Looking at the passing, as you can see, all of our passes on the halfway line. We just held on to the ball. We played well in this game. We took control of it. It wasn't a counter-attacking display, as you can see by the possession stats. We just dominated the ball from start to finish. If we had the ball, the other team can't score. Simple as that. So, match day eight, penultimate game of the video. Another bogey team off to play against West Ham. Ellis Bird came into the starting lineup and whinging about game time. Almost scored with his first first involvement 10 minutes in. Goalie makes a good save. Now West Ham have been one of them teams, similar to Palace. We just don't like playing against them. Do not like playing against them. When we come here last year, we got batted 3-1. Was not a good day at the office. That there was one of the highlights. Nat Phillips making a tackle. Very, very dry first half. We then go long. Nat Malcolm wins that header. Don't know what he's doing that high up the pitch. We end up losing the ball. West Ham on the counter-attack here. Santos got a couple of goals against us in that fixture last year. But, of course, we didn't have Felipe Sandler in the team back then. Good tackle there. Plays it to Chalabar. Very sloppy pass. He's done that a couple of times already this season. Something to watch out for. But Sandler, again, strong tackle. Wins it. Carries it forward. Plays it up to Chevalier. He then runs out wide. Gives it to Vita Rosada. Good little flip back to Chevalier. Then into Matty Longstaff. Waiting for the option. You can see Ellis Bird pointing for it. He waits. Plays him in. Brandon Rose in that pointing in. He wants it. To Brandon Rose. This is what I mean. He goes on a little run of form and then doesn't score. So annoying. That is a sitter. An absolute sitter. He's got to be putting those away. So going into the second half, 
West Ham on the attack. A mistake by Sandler, who had, had a brilliant 45. We go 1 0 down. Not what I want to be seeing. So I threw on the triple sub at this point. On comes Ichan Saka onto the right. Robbie got us into that 10 roll. So obviously confirming the substitutions, the ball hadn't gone out of play yet. The boys had obviously seen their lads warming up on the on the touchline. No one wants to come off. We go straight up the other end of the pitch. Longstaff goes and equalises. I tell you what, I tell you what, I'm taking credit for that goal. If those subs weren't ready to come on, I don't think the boys would have sprung forward like that. Because we weren't really offering anything in this game. Lovely team goal, back on level terms. On we go. So 10 minutes to go. West Ham on the attack here. Fulgas played into Santos, the guy who just, oh, it was absolutely pain in the arse. As you can see, look, they're playing one twos inside our box. Ben Johnson desperately don't want to concede another goal against his former team. That effort gets saved. And then Malcolm, I don't know why he's the one marking him for the follow-up. We go 2-1 down with eight to go. So with literally no time left, it looked like West Ham are going to do a number on us again. I felt like there was one more chance in this game. Robbie got flings it out to Vitti Rosado on the left-hand side. Plays it back to Kurt Malcolm, then into Daniel Chalabar. Had to flip got ultra attacking, time running out at this point. Only five minutes to go. Chevalier over to Ishan Sacco, screams at Ben Johnson, get forward son, get into the final third. There's no one in the box, chips it up. Gotts doesn't get there, it's cleared with the over a kick. That was it lads, that was the chance. Fine margins in the Premier League, and if you don't take those chances, obviously what can you say? But with us being ultra attacking, West Ham then bottled it with that pass. Ben Johnson, calm as you like, to Robbie Gotts. He's done it again. Another late, late, late goal for Robbie Gotts. We're going to steal a point at West Ham. We did not deserve that. Did not deserve that at all. We were not good in this game. But undefeated still. So going into our final game of the video, match day 10 against Man United. Sam Johnston makes his 50th appearance for the club in this one. So lads, playing against Man United. They done us last year. We did nick a point at Old Trafford last year. But in both games, we did not look good. Did not look good at all. Now what happened in the previous game when we played them, they got two early goals, which basically killed off the game. We had no chance after that. Trying to come back against United is basically impossible. Scott McTominay here whacked that one into the top corner. Put us 1-0 down inside the first 15. And then, moments later, Jaden Sancho and this guy called Oz, Oz, Oz Median, I think that's how you say his name. Not too sure. I think he's a regen, to be honest. They link up there, go 2-0 down. We did exactly the same thing, what I didn't want to happen. So, Ben Johnson had to make a big tackle there. A mistake by Nat Phillips. Lewis Alberto should have made it three, but Johnston made a good save. 38 minutes on the clock. Viti Rosada, strong in the interception there. Wins it, carries it forward, shrugs off Jaden Sancho. Desperately trying to gain some ground here. Can't quite do it. Plays it into Spaniel Chalabar. Then into Matty Longstaff. One more to Ellis Bird. Flings it out to the right-hand side to Brandon Rose. Ben Johnston absolutely busting his gut to overlap. Gives him a little bit of space to work. He then plays it to Matty Longstaff. One touch. Left foot smacks it. Against the run of play is not even close to how bad we were in this game. But that goal woke us up. Chevalier went for a chip there. Probably should have put his foot through it. So 2-1 in the second half. We were right in this one. We could just hold on. Hold on. Get one more chance. We could get level. But Man United on their counter-attack here. They've got numbers forwards. Mistake, free kick, whacked by Rashford, Johnston saves, then throw in deep in our half. They play it to the edge of our box. Oh, lads, you know it's coming, you know it's coming. 3 1 down, game is gone. Gone at this point. Being unbeaten this far into the season, at some point we're going to end up getting beat. And to be honest, I almost wanted us to get beat just so we get that hoodoo off our shoulder. Because whoever that team is that does, that does end our unbeaten run, they're going to be up for it all season. But of course, the game was not done at this point. Robbie got on the ball here. Skips past one challenge. Gets into the final third. Looking for the option. Plays it into Matty Longstaff. Then looking for someone else. Goes back to Nathaniel Chalabar. Back to Robbie Gotts. Then into Matty Longstaff. One more to Chevalier. There's just no room to work with. Playing well back to goal. Not where we want to be. Longstaff smacked that one. But there's a shot is deflected. And Ishan Sacco keeps it alive. Puts in a cross. Over a kick by Longstaff. Chevalier is there. 3-2. That is the scrappiest goal we have scored in a long, long time. Not every goal can be beautiful football, but I don't care. We will take that. 3-2 at this point. Game well and truly on. Nine minutes to go. We have a throw. No options on. No one wants it. So we have to go all the way back to Nathaniel Chalabar. Chalabar trying to keep the attack alive. Goes back to Felipe Sandler. United have gone part of the bus at this point. So many bodies back. Longstaff into Ishan Sacco. Then one more to Longstaff. One more to Gotts. Gotts has done it again. <laughs> <laughs> Will this guy ever stop scoring last minute goals? So, 3-3 at this point, 8 minutes to go. We went ultra defensive. It's all about keeping a point now. We didn't deserve a point and we knew with 8 minutes to go, United would go back attacking. We don't want to throw it away. We've done very well to get back onto level terms. So, 5 at the back. Obviously, this is it. Part of the bus. Defend for our lives. 
three minutes to go. Sandler on the ball. Great switch over to Kurt Malcolm here. You can see he's got a runner. Doesn't pick him out. Goes back to Nathaniel Chalabar instead. Not really any options on. We're just trying to keep hold of the ball. But we get into the final third. But suddenly Chevalier in the 10 roll. Slips through Ishan Sacco. He's going to want it. <laughs> in the 90th minute we have stole three more points against Man United. We did not deserve that. The boys knew we did not deserve that. Hey look, when you win and you don't play well, everyone knows what that means. I'm not going to say anything more than that. So lads, that's everything for these highlights. Let's take a break. Let's see how we get it on. So lads, what a start to this season. We are unbeaten. We've only dropped points twice against Liverpool and West Ham. Looking at the player stats, Johnston, Malcolm, Chalabar and Longstaff have been ever present. Ten appearances each for them. Looking at the goals, Beedlin leads the way with seven. Matty Longstaff with five. Chevalier with five. Robbie Gotts with three. All in the 90th minute or later. Looking at the assist, Matty Longstaff's on eight. Chevalier on five. Ben Johnson with three. He's had a brilliant start to his Barrow career. Now we've got about 10 mil in the budget. I want us to bring a winger in in January. Let me know down in the comments who we should be looking at. Just before we get into the league, our next video will kick off with a game against Swansea in the fourth round of the Carabao Cup. A great opportunity to be getting into the quarterfinals because obviously we won a trophy this year. Carabao Cup looking very tasty. So the main event, lads, main event, nine games in. Of course, you know, no losses so far. 25 goals scored, 14 conceded. We picked up two clean sheets. Level on points of Leicester, who've only conceded four. That just goes to show that some teams are just defensive. We are an attacking team. Our defence has massively improved, but look, all we care about this season finishing in a European spot we're not going to get carried away with a title challenge the media want us to get involved in it we're not getting involved we take it game by game we'll just keep playing 90 minutes by 90 minutes and we'll just see how we end up our next video we've got another 10 to 12 games coming up we're gonna go right into January as a season start goes I don't think we could have done any better than this I think we're on for a season that we would never ever forget but it's a long way to go yet long way to go yet so lads i hope you've been enjoying this series so far let me know down in the comments who your favorite players are because i, I can see that people are watching but the comments have all dried up guys let me know that you're there watching we're doing two to three videos a week at the minute i am loving this series i mean we are definitely sticking with this one we are going right to the very end champions league is obviously what the target is we've got a long way to go before we get there but my god what a start to this season so lads i thank you for watching if you did enjoy the video make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't done already like i said we're doing three videos a week so lads i thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video cheers